Okay, now we have Jan Small, and she has been an artist for her whole life. How many pictures have you painted? Oh my goodness, I have no idea. For Revelation, I painted uh, 200, uh -huh. and uh, that was just Revelation, and I have more, you know. I want to know, how do you get the inspiration for your pictures? I mean, uh -huh. your pictures, if you could focus in on some of these pictures, they are wonderful. God gives me visions. That's how I get them. It wasn't right away, you know, I had to learn how to paint and learn how to do everything. One day I was in church. This is after I learned to paint and everything. I was praying, Lord, what's standing between you and me today? He showed me this white road. There was a crossroad. And in the middle of that crossroad, there was this cross. It was about four feet high and about a foot thick. And it was solid gold. And he said, it's your cross. You haven't picked it up. And I said, well, what's my cross? Huh. And uh, the vision zoomed up to the cross and stamped on the, in the middle of the cross were the letters A-R-T. And he said, you haven't begun to paint the visions that I've given <laughs> oh, you. Oh, so, wow. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> yeah, so that's how it started. Well, yeah. can you tell us about some of your pictures? I can, but and I, I received the vision for this last October. I saw the Lord have a, a rag and it was dipped in blood and the sins were many, but he had erased them with his blood. All right. And uh, the scripture uh, that I got for it is from Matthew 26, 28, where Jesus and his disciples were having their last supper and he took the wine. This is the blood of the promise. It is poured out for many so that the sins are forgiven. Praise God. Huh? All right. And then in Acts 2.38, um, Peter uh, said, All of you must turn to God and change the way you think and act, and each of you must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ so that your sins will be forgiven. Then you will receive the Holy Spirit as a gift. Right. And Hebrews 9.22, As Moses' teachings tell us, blood was used to cleanse almost everything, because if no blood is shed, no sins can be forgiven. Wow. And so I just thank Jesus for shedding his blood for my sins and yours. Amen. 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 Okay, we have another one over there. Uh, yes. This is one of the paintings from Revelation. It is Revelation 3.18. And it says, I have opened a door unto you that no one is shut. When we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior and recognize that he forgave our sins, then he opens this door to us and no one can shut that door. All Ever. right. So that's so, a real promise that God yeah. will, will do what his Bible says. Amen. 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 And this is called Jesus Healing the Broken Heart. When I gave my heart to Jesus, I literally saw me hand it to him. But my heart was all broken. It was in just lots of pieces. I didn't realize that my heart was so broken. Wow. And it was broken because I lost three babies. But in that day and age, there was nothing that you could do about it. They didn't have grief counseling. They didn't have any support groups or anything. You just had to shove it down and get on with your life. And that's what I did. When I saw this broken heart, I wanted to paint it. Because, yeah. you know, lots of us have broken hearts. We just might not know it, you know. But if, when you give your heart to Jesus, pay attention to the condition of your heart, you know, and if it's broken, he can heal it. So I painted the painting of handing my broken heart to Jesus. Then one day, I was down in uh, Southern California. My husband was working down there, and so I had a lot of free time just to paint and everything. Uh, and I got up one morning, and I walked down the hallway, and I saw this at the dining room table. Wow. I saw that he had all those pieces of my heart. And he was putting them back together. Did you actually see Jesus at the table? Yes, I did. I wow. saw him there wow. putting Whoa. the pieces of my heart back together. And the reason I get emotional about it is because to think how much he loves us. You know, that he, wow. he would mend our broken hearts. You know, people, there's a lot of you watching this show right now. And you don't know that Jesus that cares about you. Here's someone that has experienced how God put her heart back together. Don't you want that in your life? Don't you want to come to Jesus and say, here, take my mess and make it new. He can do that for you today. 
Yeah. In Jesus' name, he is king of kings. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what's the next picture? Okay. Well, uh, when we have given our heart to Jesus and we belong to him, then we are his people, right? Amen. I got this vision. And the scripture that goes with it is from 1 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear their prayers from heaven and I will heal their land. I want to encourage every person that's watching this today to do that, to pray for our land, pray for America, you know, pray for America. Amen. This painting is called When. It's a huge canvas, the, the real painting. This is a print. I was up painting. I'm up close, so I don't get a really good distance painting Jesus. So I brought some clouds around, and then I thought, well, I'll bring some around here, and then I'll do. And, and then I stood back to see what I had done, and I had painted a question mark. I did not intentionally paint that question mark. Wow. I was amazed when I saw it. It, and it's called when, that he's coming again, but we don't know when. But uh, I have something else I want to show later on, but I just want to tell you that the visions that I'm getting and the words that he's showing me is he's closer. He is on his way and we aren't ready. And we need to get ready. We need to uh, accept his forgiveness and give him our hearts Amen. So he can heal him. So we can get right with God and be the bride that he's coming for. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, then I'll, yeah. I'll show you some other pictures over here. All right. But uh, this painting was done last, last December, just a couple of months ago. Each morning when I say my prayers, I ask the Lord for a word for that, for that day. And on that particular morning, he gave me Mark 7, where Jesus teaches about inner purity and in the verse, what stood out for me in the scripture that day were the verses 20 through 23. And then Jesus added, it is the thought life that defiles you. For from within, out of a person's heart come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, eagerness for lustful pleasure, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these vile things come from within. They are what defile you and make you unacceptable to God. After reading that chapter, I was also led to Psalm 51.10. It says, Create in me a pure heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. And I knew that I had to paint heart cleansing to show you that, you know, you don't know the things that are in your heart. I got jury duty. I got called for jury duty. And I was not happy. I was so mad that I didn't really understand myself. What is making me so angry about this? And I had to get on BART and go up to Oakland, where, to the court up there. And the whole time I'm just getting madder and madder until I'm gritting my teeth. And, and I'm, I'm wondering, what on earth is wrong with me? So finally we get in there. The judge starts reading the cases, and it was, uh, I, I'm sorry I have to say this, but it was count one, rape and oral copulation. Count two, the same thing, over and over. There were many, many counts that this man was charged with. And as they read each count, I, I just started shaking more and more and more. Finally, the judge says uh, that everybody was excused, but if you have an excuse, wait, and I will hear your excuses. But I want you to know, I have heard every excuse in the book. So I waited, and he, he finally called me up, and he said, uh, like, what's your excuse? And I told him, I uh, used to be on a police force. He said, were you volunteer or were you sworn? And I said, well, I was sworn. And he said, well, tell me about it. I said, well, let me tell you about my last case. It was a little eight-year-old girl. And she had been raped by her father for the last three years. I was the only female in the room. And she told the story to me. Mm. We give them a doll to explain to what, what is happening to her. And she explained it. No child that age would have the knowledge that that child had, had this not happened to her. It was very emotional for me. I had to keep my head tipped 
up looking at the ceiling because I didn't want my fellow officers to see me cry. And that's what I felt like doing. We took the, the little girl to the doctor, it was confirmed. We arrested the father and put him into Santa Rita. And then the officers went to the district attorney to get the case against the little girl. And because the, uh, the little girl could not remember the exact day and the exact time that it happened, she said it was after, after Christmas and before New Year's because our Christmas tree was still up. And it was after 6 o'clock at night because my mother had gone to work. But because she couldn't pinpoint it, the district attorney wouldn't take the case. The father was released from Santa Rita and sent home to live with that daughter again. And then I turned to the judge and I said, my experience tells me that if this district attorney has brought this case to court, then this man is guilty and we don't have to have this trial. And he said, you're excused, but I'm still mad. I am so mad. And I get on BART and I come home and I, I just don't know what's wrong with me. You haven't forgiven that district attorney. Whoa. Huh? I hadn't. Or the father, you know. So I did. I got on my knees and I did. And then I think, you know, we ask God, create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a right spirit. We do not know those things that are in us. You know, I did not know that unforgiveness was in me. That was years ago. I didn't know it was in me all those years. We have to go before the Lord and, and ask Him, create in me a pure heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit. Take out everything that I ever did that I don't even remember I did, you know? To make ourselves right with the Lord. Let's just pray right now. Father, we just pray that anybody that has unforgiveness that's hidden, that you will reveal it to them and that you will help them to be able to remove it. And so just uh, repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father, I forgive. I forgive. I forgive. I forgive. I forgive. All those people that hurt me and others. All those people that hurt me and others. I give it to you. I give it to you. Because you know what to do. I thank you, God. That you're such a good God. That you're such a good God. And I thank you that I have no more hooks in me. Thank you that I have no more hooks. In me. And my life is pure. And my life is pure. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah. Well, what's the next picture? It's called Mining the Gold. Okay. And once our hearts have been scrubbed clean, we can mine the gold that God has put in there. I want to read something here. It said, there's a gold mine. There is a gold mine in each one of us. And the scriptures tell us some of the things that we should find in our heart. Love, integrity, God's teaching, faith, praise, glory, honor to God, righteousness, truth. And there's also talents, desires, things left undone or never done. God wants us to mine the gold he has put in us, and you will be surprised at what you can do through him. Okay. I have several scriptures to go with this, but I'm just going to read one from 1 Peter 1.7. It says, your faith is more precious than gold. It gives praise and glory and honor to God. Okay? And so during the time I was working on this painting... Oh, one thing I would like to say about it before I go any further is that I use myself in, in the last painting and in this painting to show that it's up to each one of us. You have to do the cleansing. You have to do the mining. You know, you have to take part in this. During the time I was working on this painting, I saw Barbara Walters interview Oprah. Oprah has done a lot of good with the gifts that God has given to her, and Barbara commented on that. And Oprah said, every day I pray to God to use me till I'm all used up. I thought, wow, you know, and <laughs> use me until I'm all used up. And after I heard that, I was reminded of the stories of, of the loaves and the fishes, where the little boy gives, gives the Lord his, what, his lunch. And he took that, multiplied it, and fed 
the millions with it, or thousands, however many were there, the multitudes, actually. So you might think that you don't have anything worth mining. You might think you don't have any talents. But I want to encourage you. I want to really encourage you to look into your heart and see what is in there. And because there could be latent talents and dreams and uh, desires and ideas. And bring them out. Give them to Jesus. And let God use you till you're all used up. Huh? Yeah. And then it will give him praise and glory and honor. Okay. Amen. Amen. Like it? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Uh, this painting was given to me last Wednesday. I was awakened at 2.25 in the morning with this picture. <laughs> oh, and I knew that I had to, to paint it. The voice that, that was talking in my dream uh, said, uh, churches, release the Holy Spirit. Release Amen. the Holy Spirit. That's what we do in our church. We give the Holy Spirit first place, and I'm totally possessed by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes, because, you know, the Lord is wanting to come back. He's ready, but we aren't. The church isn't. We've got to be ready, and we've got to release the Holy Spirit. And this is called... Why won't my people listen? It says in 2 Timothy, a time will come when people will not listen to accurate teachings. Instead, they will follow their own desires and surround themselves with teachers who tell them what they want to hear. And uh, throughout Matthew, Mark, Luke, uh, the scriptures say, let the person who has ears listen. And Amen. so don't, don't be one of those that doesn't listen to God. Okay? Amen. We want to hear from God direct. That's right. Amen. That's right. And we want to speak directly to God, and that's what the Holy Spirit is about. And Pentecostal experiences are where we can talk right to God, and Satan has no way to understand any of it. It bypasses anything in the natural and goes directly to God. No. Uh, Jan has written several books, and we wanted to spend the, the last little bit of our program talking about how God led her to write three different books. Well, this is the last one. I'm working on one right now called How I Hear Him. But this one was just published. I got it uh, at the end of last year uh, from the publishing company. It's called uh, The Making of an Artist, The First 70 Years. <laughs> so if I get to go on, we'll have the next 70 years, huh? Okay, it's a story of how God made this artist. The person that he took, you know, the little weird kid he took and decided that she's going to be an artist and she's going to do these things, which absolutely amazed me. I never dreamed in my wildest dreams ever that I would ever be doing this. And this tells how God did it. The other book... Revelation Illustrated. They are, they were designed to be like coffee table mates, you know, so that they would uh -huh. look good together. But anyway, uh, he called me to paint the book of Revelation because he said, my preachers won't preach it and my people won't read it. I didn't think that I was capable of doing this. I didn't, I was not a good enough artist to, to paint the book of Revelation. So I suggested to God some artists that I thought were capable of doing this for him. But he told me they won't give up the fame and the fortune to do this for me. So I said, okay, then I'll do it. But I want to tell you something. When God calls you to do something, he equips you to do it. And, Amen. you know, I, I didn't know how to, to really do that until I started. So I just started. I read Revelation 1, and, I, and then he gave me the vision, and I painted it. And I was afraid to read too far ahead because I was afraid I would be overwhelmed and, and feel inadequate. So I just went one verse at a time, and the book is just full of the scriptures illustrated. All the scriptures illustrated. Uh, yeah. 19 years to paint and five years to write the book. But if you find Revelation too difficult to understand, 
You know, a picture's worth a thousand words. When you can see that picture in your head, you understand it more. The, the book also has stories uh, uh, about the paintings, about the things that God revealed to me as I was painting it. I think it's an interesting book because, you know, really and truly, I don't feel that I did it. He did it. Okay. And I wanted to say something about her book. It's called Healing by His Design. And in this book, she gives you ideas of how you can find what God is speaking to you. And so I took this uh, to heart, and I made a drawing the way she says. <laughs> and God spoke to me. And we're going to share that with you. Okay, well, uh, like I said, that I had lost the, my three babies and... You know, I, I, there was no way to get healed from that. And I wasn't a person to go tell everybody because I didn't want to make my friends sad. I didn't want to write it down because I really didn't want anybody to know, you know, all how I hurt inside. And so it was just in there. And then one day, uh, the Lord, uh, I went to the beach. My sister-in-law had given me a book called, uh, uh, just a little blank book. And, and she said, it's a just because I love you book. Now, I had gone to this beach. My husband was a diver, so I would go down there, set up my easel and my paints, and, and paint the beach. But I had gone to that beach so many times that I wasn't inspired anymore. But when I packed my stuff, I decided to put in the little Just Because I Love You book. So when I got there, I shut my eyes. I listened to the sounds and all, and I just began to feel on the paper what it felt like. And I did this over and over again that day. I must have done seven or nine designs. And when I got through, it felt like a cool breeze had just gone through me, washed me clean. Amen. I felt tremendous. <laughs> so I came back, and, and I, I'm an art teacher, and I had art classes. So I uh, told my art class about it. They got all excited. They wanted to try it. And from then on, they didn't want to paint anymore. They just wanted to do this. <laughs> and then the Lord called me to put it together in a book. And so the book uh, holds the uh, students' work and some of my work. But later on, I didn't do it so abstractly anymore. It became more uh, clear what I was thinking. Uh, so did we want to talk about yours? Yes. Here? So I made a drawing. And I closed my eyes. And I asked God to direct me to make the lines similar to what Jan had done. And then she told me how to solid in per certain parts of the picture according to how I felt it should be. And so this is what I came up with. Okay, and she called it fish hook. And then a friend that was with us uh, saw ascension, like somebody climbing up a, a, a wall or something. So it's like, you know, when you're hooked by the fisherman, who is Jesus, mm -hmm. then you ascend, right? Let's see, the next one she saw, uh, we called it banner. But then this friend <laughs> that was looking at it said, well, it reminds me of the windsurfers down, you know, at the ocean, you know. And so we could see that when we're hooked by the Lord and begin to ascend and it, are moved by his spirit, then his banner is over us. You see? Amen. Right? And then uh, the next one, uh, she saw a shofar. And which is blown at important events and to announce certain yeah. things and give it a go there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then the last one, uh, my friend saw a hammock. And when, when we know him, when we are hooked by him, when we allow his spirit to move through us, then we can rest. Okay? Praise God. And then, and then it reminded me of a smile. Yeah. So while we're resting, we got a smile on our face <laughs> because of Jesus. Amen. And you can have a smile on your face too. It doesn't have to be just us here in the studio. It can be everybody in the name of Jesus. This is for you. Okay. This painting is from a vision that I had early in 2009. And I, wa I was peeking over the clouds. I was like this. And I was face to face with his feet. And I knew it was his feet because they had the scars. 
And that is how close he is. That is how close he is. I call the painting, He is Here. And the scripture I receive for this painting is from Luke 17, 24. For when the Son of Man returns, you will know it beyond all doubt. It will be as evident as the lightning that flashes across the sky. So I put the lightning in with Karen's consultation. She felt this was, he is coming to Reality Church. Hallelujah. Thank you. But I bet he's already here. Yes. <laughs> person that was here and every person that's listening, I pray a blessing on them. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks so much. Bless you. Gosh, I, I want to share with you a way to talk about this. I am yours. I am forever yours. Mountain high.